This is Sean Presser Sr., and y'all are watching the Fan View Podcast. Yo, man, listen. Welcome back, everybody. Fan View Podcast. We ain't gonna go into any more episodes. We we official now, G Sports. Oh yeah, we official. We in the building. Listen, I'm that boy Fred. G Sports back at it again. With another guest, Sean Preston Senior from the Tri Paris. Tri Paris. You know I gotta rub that man. You know I gotta rub that man. You my lucky dude. Coach Hen ain't here. Yeah man. <laughs> yeah yeah. My dude Sean Preston in the building, man. Sean Preston Senior. Yes. Uh, been a good friend of mine for some years, man. Uh, I remember. Playing against him when he was a head coach back in the day, but we were getting it all that. Appreciate you coming on the Fan View podcast, man. How does it feel? I'm gonna get right into it. Yes. How does it feel? You got you got one son playing in the Relies Quest Bowl in Tampa, Florida on January 2nd. And then you got another son that's gonna be competing in the Sugar Bowl Sugar right Bowl. here in New Orleans. How is it for the Preston family, you and Miss Laura, man? Just tell me about how this holiday season been in and how, what you expecting for these two bowl games with your sons, man. Well, first of all, fellas, I am elated to be here today. <laughs> uh, watch you all the time, and to be sitting here on the set, it's a blessing. Appreciate and, it. And, uh, you know, during this holiday season, you know, little things is the things that, you know, we really, really pay attention to. And just being here today and sitting here, you know, I appreciate it. And like I said, looking forward to it. Pledge is ours. No doubt. Uh, jumping into it with the boys, man. You know, me and Ms. Laura, you know, we're always on the go. And, always. Uh, <laughs> you know, is that we we plan stuff out as best as we can to keep the chaos down uh, between uh, doing what we have to do to support both boys. Right. Uh, but once again, we see it as a blessing. Yep. Right. You know, most parents, you know, a lot of parents would love to have some of the situations and issues we have to deal with. Right. So right. we don't count right. it as, uh, as 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 a negative. You know, we count it as a blessing. You know, the different things that we have to do in planning in order to make sure we support both boys. Listen, talk about having two boys playing in the SEC. Mm -hmm. One at Mississippi State that just recently graduated, by the way. Yep. Um, congratulations on Kudos that. Kudos to my dude, Sean you know, D, man. You know, mm -hmm. graduating. And, um, then you get another kid coming out of high school. He gets recruited and he, you know, commit to Alabama. Talk about having two kids playing in the SEC, playing mm -hmm. at that level. Most kids, you know, don't most parents don't get kids to play college football, let alone right. Power Five, let alone SEC football. Big right. boy football. <laughs> Big boy football. Talk right. about just having two kids being able to play at that level, man. Well, once again, you know, we don't take it for granted, you know, as, as a family um, because, you know, like you said, you know, you, you have parents and families that would be elated to have just one kid playing college football, period. Right. Uh, and to have two sons, you know, that are playing on that level, you know, once again, you know, we're blessed. Right. Uh, you know, God's been good to us. Uh, it's not all of our works. It's not all of their works. And I, I make sure that they understand that, you know, it, it stands on the strength of a lot of prayers that came before them. Right. Along with their hard work. Right. Uh, you know, there's a saying, you know, prayers without works, you know, is it, it, void. So um, we definitely enjoy it. Uh, we definitely savor every moment, but sometimes, man, it feel unreal. It's right. Like sometimes I gotta pinch myself. So, right, like, right. 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 Like, really? You know, when I look at the TV uh, and and see when both of their teams are being talked about for whatever reason. Right. It's like, damn. You know, that's us. That's y'all. I mean, you know, that's I mean, you know, that's y'all. You know, that's our families. That's our right. extended football family. Press the name. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just hope that you know our journey you know, continues to inspire others, you know, that it could be done. Uh, but like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's come with a lot of hard work over the years mm -hmm. since they were young. You know, it just didn't happen overnight. Correct. And uh, I want families and individuals to understand that, too, nothing was given to them. Um, you know, uh, old Coach Monica, mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget, you know, when Sean was coming out, he was at St. Charles Catholic, yep. and then one of the comments he had, I think they beat St. James in the playoffs, and Sean had a good game, and he said, yeah, you know, he's, you know, he's got these uh, Power Five offs, think he's committed to Mississippi State, you know, you know, they don't give those away. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm proud of the boys that they have worked to get themselves to the point that they are right now. 
me, you, we were talking before the show, and you said a key word, sacrifice. And a lot of parents drop the ball when it, when you, when it pertains to investing and sacrificing for their kids when they're trying to get them to a certain level. Right. I remember when you had Sean D and Shaz going to camps in the A grade, mm -hmm. traveling all over the country, going to Clemson. I'm talking about a real camp tour. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you as a father just want to invest in your kids so early, and how did you learn the blueprint to be able to get them to the point that they had today, way back then? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, there's, there's blueprint out there already. You know, and, uh, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of associates, uh, you know, Lindsey Scott, uh, uh, you know, Kenyatta Sparks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a lot of friends in the business, you know, as college coaches and different things like that, that I would take advice from. Jabbar Jaloup, uh, yeah. Mickey, Mickey. Uh, you know, Valdez was, you know, doing his thing in coaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Alden Foster was a successful coach, which is actually Sean Jr.'s godfather. Yep. Wow. Uh, you know, and the list goes on and on that you kind of, I was the type of dad, I'm not going to screw it up. <laughs> I'm going to take the proven blueprint, right. even if I had to take pieces from here and there, you know, and put it together. Uh, and one of the things was, man, you have to sacrifice. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, we started at a young age. Young. Um, you know, I also relied on others. You know, you have to learn as a dad, you know, when they start to turn a deaf ear to you. So you've got to push it off on people that you trust that's got the same message as you that's going to bring it to them. You know, so from the training aspects, you know, when their other buddies was maybe at home chilling or playing the game, right. and I pick you up for one practice, and we going straight to the trainer, you know, or when we in the summertime and we're on this camp tour, right. you know, and it's hot and it's grudging along, and maybe your buddies are here and there, you know, the message was that this is going to pay off one day. Right. And uh, I'm just glad that, you know, you know, I tell them all the time, uh, you know, I'm glad when I can go back and, and show you, hey, I told you so. Right. I told you this was right. going to work. If you do mm -hmm. A, B, C, mm -hmm. one, two, three, this is going to be your results. I love when those results happen yep. and right. I'm able to reflect back to the boys and say, see, I told you. Told you. Yeah. But I want to talk about something else as it pertains to sacrificing and investing in your kids. Not only did you invest in your kids, but you invested in other people's kids. I can remember you loading up the, the Range Rover, and you got four and five kids packing their stuff in there with you, coming along for the ride to these camps with these kids. Talk about how you invest in other people's kids, man, and, and, and how God has, back, has God has blessed you on the back end because of that. That's a big one. You know, I always think that God's got enough blessings for all of us, mm -hmm. right. whether it's sports, uh, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's a big house or whatever. You know, he got enough. If that's what you want, you know, he's got enough for all of us. So the one thing as we was journeying, I never wanted the boys to go on a success by themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so... And then also I realized that, you know, there were boys that they were friends with, associates with, that didn't have the male figure or the daddy figure to bring them along. Right, right. So I always felt like if, if, if I went that extra mile to include others as we were journeying, that God was going to bless me. Right. No. You know, right. it's going to bless – that he was going to bless mine even more because of the sacrifice we did. So our whole journey, whether it was Sean's journey or Shaz's journey, we never moved by ourselves. Right, right. I don't remember one camp or one event that we attend, attended <laughs> that it was my boys and me alone ain't no or our family talking. alone. We always, Crazy. you know, we always brought somebody else Just along really. with us. Uh, and that's been a blessing. You know, I've had kids that come back later on and say thank you. Right. That's all I want. That's all you wanted. That's all I need. That's and all my heart need. And, uh, you know, you were part of my journey. Correct. You helped me along exactly. the way. Exactly. And, uh, you know, once again, it's been a blessing. And you're still doing it, even though your sons even are going, your on son to college, going to college. You're still, yeah. you know, giving back with the 7 on 7. And still, right. I saw you at uh, the Tulane camp with uh, my nephew uh, and uh, James Lee. 
Th- this uh, past. That's summer. right. That's right. You know, because I remember seeing you, seeing you and your wife. I'm like, mm-hmm. your sons at college. What y'all doing here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it you come across part of what you do. Right. You come across the kids in seven on seven, and all of a sudden, and you hear their stories, and then you you know they don't come out and ask for the help. Correct. But you know through their stories yep. that they're asking for they're help. Asking yep. For help. So <laughs> once again, you know, we're gonna make the sacrifice, and like I said, you know, we're gonna do what we we can do. So like I said, we'll we'll go check on them at camp. So we'll make sure they go to camp. So was like I said, just the kids in the neighborhood, the kids in the community, the kids that we come in seven on seven, just to continue to try to do our part. And I can't see that in any, anytime soon. Now, I, here's what I want to talk to you about, Coach. There's a difference in recruiting from the time Sean came out mm-hmm. and the time that Shaz comes out. Yep. Which is by what a three or four year difference. Yep. No NIL, NIL. Talk about the differences of the, their recruitment coming out of high school and what was that like for you as a parent having to, you know, you got one son, so you got a dose of what that experience is like, but now you got another son and the marketplace has changed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Talk about that process and how, how you was able to navigate that as a parent with two top recruits coming out of, coming out of the state. I'll never forget um, Sean's signing uh, announcement. We were at Ball, Ball and Root. <laughs> and, and, I was done. And G Sports I was had, done. It, had it live. <laughs> he covered it. And the biggest issues we had is uh, the Wi Fi. Where, where to pick up the <laughs> balloons and, and the shirt and, you know, the Wi Fi connection. That was it. You know, now, uh, you know, with the next son, you, you know, like you said, you know, we got a whole different animal. Right. Uh, you know, Sean's biggest deal, you know, there was no NIL involved. There was no transporter portal involved. Another one. So <laughs> Sean was one of those three-star kids that Mississippi State said, hey, you know, we see something. You know, we can bring him in and develop him behind Jonathan Abram and, you know, some mm-hmm. of the other guys. You pick. know, you know we, you know, we, we can sign a kid like that. You know, uh, there wasn't, well, no, you know, we're going to cherry pick from the transfer portal and a kid like Sean was left behind. Fast forward it, you know, the Shaz, you know, there's a whole nother realm of recruiting that we didn't have to deal with with, with with the older boy. You know, luckily, we were blessed where Shaz was one of those high-profile kids to where we didn't get shunned for a team maybe picking from the portal. Right. Um, you know, there also was the situations of, hey, you know, this is what we can, from an NIL standpoint, this is what we can give you. Uh, this is the opportunities that this university is providing from an NIL perspective. Right. You know, so once again, we're fortunate to where, you know, we're not rich by far, but we're blessed. Right. You right. know, we're comfortable. So from the NIL standpoint, th- that wasn't a real selling point with us either. Correct. You know, be- because, you know, we we were not in a predicament yeah. where, you know, we needed a financial blessing. Yep, correct. Whereas some of these families, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. You know, that's the bottom line. That's what it's coming to. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And me and my wife, we've talked about it, how we've had to handle Shaz's signing and also this first year, you know, because colleges have to re-recruit their the same roster. Kids. At least, At least a year or two. I mean, Bama had 21 kids in a, tr- in a transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a different age. It's just a different it's, animal Imagine there. that. You have, you recruited a kid, and you signed it. And then the following, come, really come November, really, mm-hmm. you start recruiting the same kid that you got here because mm-hmm. they, they all know now the transfer portal is right before – the bowl week, you got to start making yep. this announcement. You got to yep. get in that thing because mm-hmm. you got to start making some quick decisions. We we've had Jamie Vans on here. Yeah, he was talking about it. He last was talking week. about it last week. He said you got to you got to make this that make decision, decision now, quick. It, you got, that decision has to come fast. You don't have you don't have an opportunity to just basically go to tour different places and you, you're mm-hmm. not coming out of high school no more. You got to make that decision right. fast. So it's right. just man, it's amazing how this place has just it's evolved. And yeah. then you have to realize too, it's just not the kid that maybe is not playing. It's the kid also that blew up. That blew up. 
you know, you got to hold him. So you have to hold a kid that had the good year, yep. and you have got to hold a kid that you sitting there telling him, you know, you got to sit in and develop a little more. Right. So Oof. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, a lot of people don't look at it in that aspect, but it's both ways, you know. And you've got to recruit. Everybody's got to recruit uh, your roster, you know, at least the kids' first and second year. Man, it was crazy. But the only people could transfer were just the graduate assistant people who graduated. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I do want to go back to Shaz and Sean's recruitment, though, because when Sean was coming out, <clears throat> um, Dan Mullen had just left yeah. and went to Florida, mm-hmm. and Mike Leach was coming in, right? No, no, no. no. Joe Moorhead. Joe, Joe Moorhead was Joe coming Mo, in. Joe yeah. I'm sorry. Joe, Joe Moorhead was coming in. Yeah. So that was a new staff coming in. Mm-hmm. He was already committed to Mississippi State right. with Dan Mullen's staff. Mm-hmm. So a new staff came in, So, and, which I had about a month. In between, maybe a month, something like that. Maybe a month, right? <clears throat> how did you get? How did y'all still feel comfortable, still wanting to go to Mississippi State, knowing that you're trying to build a relationship with a staff in a month's time? Immediately, like the next week, Coach Moorhead um, was in Thibodeau, so he came to the house, uh, brought the new staff with him. Um, one of them was a uh, coach at Marshall, Coach Huff. Mm-hmm. Coach Huff was the running back coach at Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had ties with my running back coach from Southern, believe it or not. <laughs> Small world. Um, Small world. <laughs> and when the staff came in, when they did the in-home visit, you know, the comfortable, we were very, very comfortable. Then we took the official visit mm-hmm. the next week. So between the visit at home and the official visit, you know, Sean felt comfortable enough. <clears throat> and me and mom felt comfortable enough that hey, you know, we're gonna stick with it. Uh, Give what the know. sermon came in. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, like I said, Sean has played. He was he was recruited by Dan Mullins and Coach Knox. Yep, Coach Knox, who's, Knox, who's Knox. the main recruiter. Then he played a year for uh, two years for Coach Joe Moorhead, who was a great coach, great man. Uh, he just was never accepted at you know in 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 in, in Starkville, right? Uh, and then for Coach Leach, so you know he's had pretty much three head coaches in his college different experience. DCs, experience. Different yeah. DCs, different DCs, yeah, different DB coaches. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Coach Walsh, yeah, you know, Coach Walsh, my, I do, you know, Coach Walsh, and then you know, Coach Walsh was was moved from safeties Safety to running, running backs back. this year, yeah. which was another change for him. Yep. So you know he's he's which had the been a reason for him to hop in the transfer portal. Look, and there were times. <laughs> that, that he's come to to me and his mom and like you know I think I may want to you know try something else because the portal was implemented during his time there. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yep. And you know, mom and myself, n- no, you're gonna you're gonna put your head down and you're gonna work, um, and things are gonna be all right. And once again, each time we told him that, you know. Right around that third, fourth game of the season, <clears throat> and he started playing and doing his thing, whatever, whatever. So I'm able to say, I "Told you so." Right. Uh, but once again, you got some kids that don't have that. Correct. You know, they don't have that that sounding board to to turn to. And then when he would come to me with maybe different things, I can all once again, I can refer him out. Right. To our database of individuals, mm-hmm. you know, that I can send him to. You know, you you know, you don't have to believe your daddy. <laughs> you know, call this one. Call that right, one. Right. right. And, you know, so, you know, that's a blessing within itself to kind of deal with that. And then Shaz going to Bama. Because I ain't going to lie, Cole. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> when you talk about Bama, a lot of kids get intimidated. Mm-hmm. Of course. And, and they say to themselves, yeah, like, it's cool to get that offer. Mm-hmm. You're excited. But now when it's actually time to go, go there and play, enroll and start playing and practicing, that's a whole different ball game. Did you ever, did you and Shaz and, and Laura, Miss Laura, ever get to the point where y'all was like, this Bama now, I don't know. Maybe maybe we need to consider something else. I, I, I don't, you know. You got to think about the room. This, with this, the, is, like, the, this is like the, the, the kids. This is like a little mini. Kids just coming through the, yeah, this is like a little mini NFL. Mm-hmm. Not saying he not good mm-hmm. enough, but it's mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. you know the kind of stage he going to. Mm-hmm. You know, of the two boys, I always tell people, Sean, no. Going into it, no. Bama, he wasn't a Bama guy. 
Shaz has always been an overcomer and a perseverer. Mm. And I thought that was two biggest things that if you're going to, if this is what we're going to do, you know, you're going to have to, at some point in time, you're going to have to overcome and you're going to have to persevere in order for it to work at Bama. And he's got those traits, you know, as a dad, mom, you know, of course we thought that there were other spots he would have went that the road would have been a, a little easier. Uh, nothing is easy, but a little easier. easier. Because you know there, when you sign the dotted line, you're going there and the person in front of you is possibly a first rounder. <laughs> the other kids they brought in with you <laughs> right. are first, first rounders. Right. And the ones that they're signing in this class are first, first rounders. rounders. So, you know, you got to know your kids. And you got to know what's their strong points and what's their weak points. And uh, we as a family say, hey, you know, we can do this. You know, we can do this with Shaz there. Uh, and when it was all said and done, like I said, I mean, he's got to be happy. Um, you know, it was our job to kind of get him to the point to where he had great options. Mm -hmm. And once we got to that point, all right, now you have to be happy. You know, this is your journey, you know. And we'll do whatever we have to do to support you while you're there. And, and, you, and you turned down LSU in, in all of that. Mm -hmm. Frank Wilson was trying to flip y'all leading up to the day of signing. I mean, everybody Ooh. in the community wanted him to go to LSU. That was a whole nother, right. you know, dilemma y'all had to go through. How did y'all deal with all that? How did you prepare yeah. Chaz for all the naysayers? Like, bro, you going to Bama when you go right here to LSU? Yeah. Frank Wilson in your house on a mm -hmm. home visit, mm -hmm. trying to flip you. He coming to the school every day. And Leave everybody know about Frank and them home Come visits. On, and we know everybody know Frank <laughs> the OG. Frank the OG. We know. Like, nobody <laughs> telling Frank Wilson no. Not, mm, but y'all told him no. How, like, how y'all dealt with that? You know, the main thing is, you know, we got a lot of friends in, in Baton Rouge. So, <laughs> you know, we definitely wanted to make sure that we um, stayed true uh, and did things the right way, you know, wanted to stay real throughout the whole process. and But as you remember, that was a big whirlwind that took place yes. right at the end of that signing day with, with Coach O leaving yep. and, yep. you know, and Frank coming in and not knowing what's going to happen with Mickey. Because Frank came and with, like, maybe, like, a month before signing day? A oh, couple no, weeks? A couple weeks. Yeah, it was like, yeah. It was a couple weeks. A couple weeks, yeah. You know, they and had... Him and Jaluk ended up at St. James at the same time trying right. to get Shades. That's that's right. They and didn't they, know who the wide receiver team coach team was going to be, be even though could, it was yep. rumored that Cortez, Cortez right. was coming. Yep. You know, Cortez was recruiting him at Georgia. So it was a lot. And, yeah. and I tell people, Coach O did a great job recruiting Shaz. He really, really did, you know, uh, with the phone call, with the FaceTime. i never forget, he he FaceTimed Shaz from the green room uh, when, draft. When, when Jamal was getting drafted, you know. And, wow. and, and he put he – How put, was that? How was that feeling? Like, wow. Wow. Like, wow, I'm they got the TV on, you know. <laughs> so we watching it, and here it is. I'm like, wow. Wow. But Bro, you blessed. You know, and Frank. Uh, that's, probably, that's recruit. Yeah. Frank's recruit. When when Frank finally got in place, you know, he immediately contacted us. You know, Coach Coach Kelly was flying over to different spots, and uh, Frank must have spent a day, he half the day at school and then the rest of the night, you know, damn, you know, in Thibodeau. And we just talked. You know, we talked and we caught up, you know, been knowing Frank a long time. And, uh, you know, when he left, you know, once again, you know, Shaz, let's talk in the morning. I didn't want to talk tonight. We'll talk in the morning. He let him sleep on it and process it. And he got up the next morning and, you know, he, he still wanted to stay true, you know, to Bama. And, you know, once again, uh, we, we know that we live in the heart of Tiger country. Um, but we also know that we've had – Individuals that we're close with, you know, mm -hmm. Devontae. I was just about to say you know, Devontae Smith. That, yeah. that, that it has worked. It worked. You know, it has worked. So, I got a question for you. Stick, sticking on that same topic, how much of that decision as parents you allow it to be your kids' decision? And how much of that decision you as a parent say, you know what? I know what's best for you. Mm -hmm. How much of that, of those these kind of decisions? These are business decisions. This is mm -hmm. a lot of times these kids' first real business life decision. Mm -hmm. How much of that is you as a parent saying, you know what, we're going to let you make this decision, but how much of this is a parent you saying, you know what, I got to do what's best for my kid? <laughs> Once again, you got to know your kid, you know. Uh, and either my, both of my boys, you know, they're different. So with Sean, you know, we probably 
pushed a little more to, hey, this is the best decision. But also, you got to know your kid. I can't tell him that. I got to show him that. At the time, Jaluk was at Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, that's Uncle Jaluk to him. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, Dad, I think I'm going to go to Texas Tech. Let's go visit. So what we and did Lubbock. was, let, let's go visit. <laughs> so what we did was, we flew there. Easy flight there. But we had a 707 event in Dallas intertwined in that in, in that uh, visit. We drove from Lubbock to Dallas. Lubbock. How far is that drive? About seven hours. It's a father and son bonding moment. Well, I will never want to do it. Dad, no, no. Dad, I don't think I could do this. Right. <laughs> right. So we were still able to get what we wanted out of the deal, but we had to go about doing it a different <laughs> way. That's what's Sean. Now with Shaz, once again, much, much calmer thinker, uh, really, really puts thought into things, mm -hmm. uh, a deeper thinker. Um, you know, with him, it was like, once again, once we got to uh, a group of almost, you know, he can't lose, you know, once we got down to that group, and it ended up being Texas, Georgia, LSU, and Bama. And we really, really thought that out of any one of those, you know, he would have been fine. Um, I thought Texas had a good chance to get y'all because I know uh, Sarkeesian wife and Miss Laura hit yes, it off. They did. Yeah. Well, my wife, man, you could put her in the Amazon jungle and come <laughs> back. She she talking with the Shout out to Miss Laura, snakes. man. My girl, you know? man. So um, so with him, we just, hey, you know, we've got you to this point. You know, it, you know, it's your call. Hmm. And we were comfortable with it. Right. You know. With with the younger boy, with the older boy, like I said, we we did kind of push more. To, hey, this is probably your best your deal. Best, your best deal. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna I wanna rewind to twenty four year old Sean Senior. Okay, you had graduated Southern by then. Oh yes, right. Yep. Uh, played at Southern. When was it that you? knew that your the purpose for your life was going to be coaching, uh, giving back, mentoring young men, and just doing all the different things that you do in the community. When when was when did that happen? When did that switch go off in your head? I would say when I got fired from Thibodeau High School. You know, uh, my life kind of changed at that moment of how I looked at things and you know it 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 it, it switched from maybe focusing so much on me mm -hmm. to helping others. Uh Sean Jr. was born, mm -hmm. you know, while I was at Thibodeau, he might have been two, three years old. And um, you know, when I got to Thibodeau, I think I was twenty four you know, as a head coach, maybe you 25. Coach yeah, I was making 25 late on that year. I didn't know you so, were that young. You know, wow. so I stayed there, like I said, about three, four years. And upon my being released, you know, it's kind of when my life shift, you know. And like I said, it was more of, you know, being a, 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 a servant, um, you know, rather than maybe focusing so much on myself. And, uh, you know, I could feel the shift. It felt better. You know, right. like I said, moves were easier. Right. Uh, 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 things were easier obtained. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, normally when you're walking in your in your purpose, that tends to happen. Right. Uh, right. You know, so you're not forcing things. Not forcing things. You know, we call them sweatless victories. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you know, sweatless mm -hmm. victories. Right. And, you know, so those when when you know, like I said, I would say in my late twenties, and uh, you know, I've been on that road ever since. So you feel like the you getting fired from Tipperary High was a blessing in disguise. Blessing in disguise. Blessing. In disguise. Best thing that ever happened to me. Now you most know. people wouldn't say that. Best thing that ever happened. To most me. people wouldn't even think about a situation where you probably didn't want to be fired. Didn't mm -hmm. think you was probably getting fired. Mm -hmm. But how that turned out to be something that was just this thing for you to, to catapult you right. on this journey right. that you've been called in life for so right. long and do the things that you've been able to do. The next, the, that next year, you know, maybe six months later, uh, me and, and, and me and Jaluk was in Baton Rouge, and we was at a uh, we had an AD and a principals conference uh, in Baton Rouge, and 
the lady who fired me, she was there. And, and and we all was in the same room, you know, so I'm not really talking to her, was not. <laughs> right. <It's a> <laughs> room. Jaluk, Jaluk walks up to the lady. He said, you such and such, you know, or are you the one that fired? Jaluk Bold. Uh, are you the one that fired, you know, Sean Preston? She's like, yeah, unfortunately I am. He said, thank you. He said, because ever since you did that, his life has gotten better. And he walked off. And it made me think. Shots fired. It made me think. He's like, he's right. You know, he didn't tell a lie. And from that day on, I mean, it's been, it's been good. It's been do a good you, run. Do you see coaching in high school in your in your future once both of your boys are done playing college ball? A lot of people say, "Do you miss it?" You know, I so, think you miss it. Me, you know, I was at <laughs> I was at St. James, mm -hmm. you know, in the early uh, two thousand with Rick Gailey. Then I went on to Hornville when they were hot. Now, I never knew that. I just found that out, like, yeah. maybe, like, a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't I, know that. I did a little stand. And then I went to Thibodeau, um, um, you know, when they were down. And they had a chance to kind of bring it back to the point. And right when they let me go, boom, they caught fire again. Mm -hmm. uh, got it. Went to administration. And when I went to administration, I, I got involved in peewee ball. Because the boys were right. of that age. Right. right. That age, right. man. Right. You couldn't tell me that coaching that peewee ball wasn't just like us coaching right. college. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know. Passionate. You Passionate. Know. Passionate. Then was able to get back into coaching a little bit at my own mind, that assumption. Mm -hmm. Got out again when I got a principalship. But once again, stayed involved in middle school ball, stayed involved in, in peewee ball, uh, then got involved in the 707. So I've always had an outlet that allowed me to stay around the game. Uh, just recently, me and my wife started refereeing. So Miss Laura refereeing? Miss Laura referees volleyball. Come on, I'm man. in my second year of football. We're both in our first year of basketball. Multiple uh, streams of revenue. We might go ref, uh, umpire some softball. Woo! That's what I'll be trying so, to tell people. Multiple streams to, of revenue. Yeah, in years to come, I can't say that I, I won't and I will, but it's not like there's a need for me to get back in. But, you know, as the boys, you know, move on from college, you know, you never know. You never know. You never know. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's, it, you know, it's a definite no or yes. But, you know, it's a possibility. Now, I do want to talk to you though about going back to the, the college thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know Mike Leach has just recently passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, talk about your relationship with Coach Leach. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, your son is at Mississippi State. But, right. you know, talk about your relationship with him and – I want to talk to you a, little about, a lot about his offense. What do you think about Coach Leach okay. and his offense, his impact? And his personality. His personality that he's left on college football. <laughs> well, man, we're still kind of just dealing with the whole death. Yeah. Um, right. You know. So surprising. So surprising. Yeah, and like so, just so like. Sudden. Yeah. Like he was at practice. That Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> and Sean said the next morning, you know, they got the call that he had been rushed to the hospital, but he's going to be all right. What's not? And then we start seeing the things like, man, things not looking good. So, you know, the memorial service was just Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So everything is still kind of fresh, you know, with the kids and what's not. Um, I actually had more interaction with Coach Leach through him recruiting Shaz than actually from a standpoint of coaching Sean because, of course, Sean's on defense. You're right. Correct. Uh, he don't he's, touch defense. He's one of those guys. Yeah, he don't touch defense. You know, y'all go – <laughs> go stop him. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> right. Go stop him after we go three and out three or four times in a row. Um, but through the conversations with, you know, with him recruiting Shaz, um, very, very strange. And uh, strange, but very, very smart. Um, and I think his strangeness and weirdness was almost what these kids need today. Because <laughs> they all know, sense. they all figure they got it. They all think they got to figure it out, <laughs> right? And you got this one that comes up to you and start asking you questions about, uh, well, you know, how many craters do you think there's on the moon or something like right. that? Or, you know, these are just way out questions is like make them like, you know, kind of, you know, and they respect that. <laughs> so Sean used to tell me all kind of stories, man, that he'll just come up at the end of practice or during practice and you just never know what he's going to ask, what he's going to say, the comments. So it kind of always kept them on their toes. Um, you know, from an offensive standpoint, you know, a genius. Mm -hmm. um, I, like to, you know, I like to call him the Andy Reid of college football. Genius, man. <laughs> and, you know, and we all see the spinoffs, you know. Oh, Lee and Riley. You know, his coaching tree. Yes. Clips Kingsbury at, at, at the pro yep. level. That's right. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I was looking at the memorial service and – 
one thing that I, you know, like about Coach, you know, and Gordon Minshew said it. He said, when you play for him, you never feel like you're an underdog going into a game against anybody. It's like you always have a chance to win because he's got something that he knows is special that's different from what people are going to see, you know. And I'll never forget uh, the first game he was there uh, when they played LSU in Baton Rouge. And upset they them. threw for 700-something yep. yards, <laughs> and they upset them and beat them the way they did. Yep. I was like, oh, my God. Yep. You know, the, the, he is what you've read yeah. and you've heard about. you heard about. You know, um, and then another thing that sticks out to me about Coach Leach is he's got a motto about playing the next play. Mm -hmm. You know, bad, good, and different. Let it go. And we, Short time we, memory. We go on to the next play. Yep. And if, if you're always giving your full attention to the next play, to the next practice, to the next game, if you lose a game, let it go. You win a game, let it go. You know, the success rate, you know, tends to rise, you know, if you have that kind of mindset. So, uh, you know, he made a big impact in a short period of time there in Starkville. You know, he was real well liked. You know, one of the things that touched my heart just yesterday uh, was, you know, they said one of his last act of donations was to uh, a black-owned restaurant. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That we go to they, all the time. They said he was about to like shut it down. Huh? About to shut down. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, you know, the young lady told the story. Of course, she didn't put a dollar amount on it, but said that hey, he was very, very generous and saved us from closing. So you know, you got to be careful. You know, because I know he's controversial too. Correct. And you have some individuals that ah, uh, you know, he's with the cowbell. You know, and he's, all that. he's left wing. He's right wing. But I've always been a person is that I judge people. By how they treat me, how they treat you, you know, you know, and some people can't don't, judge them how they vote. Some people don't operate like that, so that's my coach Leach deal. Um, I want to talk about the way you was brought up. I'm very familiar with your family, mm -hmm. all right. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I'm around so many parents, and I see how parents could be their kids' dream killers. And I think that the way you were brought up and the way you conduct yourself in the community, the way you raise your kids on, on principle, uh, it means something. And I've always paid attention to it. You know, uh, you might not even know this, but some things that me and you didn't talk about over the years and how I see you handle your sons, I handle my son. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he just told me he saw you at uh at your little at the house. house. At the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure get the party, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He said, Daddy, uh, Mr. Sean said he gonna, be, he gonna be on your podcast. I said, yeah, he gonna be on there. But um, I remember a story, man. I, I woke up this morning, it's no lie. I woke up this morning and I was trying to remember the story. I don't know where we was. I think, I know we was at a camp, but you was telling a story about your mom and how she, how she was working coming up and you was trying to tell your sons about you know about being appreciative and understanding that um you know we blessed but you know this is how my mama came up and mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. but I want to talk about your roots okay and I want you to you know share it to, to our viewers about what it what it comes from like you don't mm -hmm. just wake up you don't wake right. up like this being right. the person that you are and, right. and being able to pour that into other kids and, right. and right. your kids too I want right. you know talk about that I, I, I'm pretty sure you know the story I'm talking about. Right, right. But right. share that, share that with our viewers. Right. Well, as a parent, you know, I feel like you have a role, uh, and you have to know your role uh, when it comes down to handling your 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 kids, uh, your role in the recruitment process, your role in them being at the university, and what's your role at that point too. Um, you know, but it goes back to like G saying about values and things like that. You know, you know, in order for me to operate like that, I had to be raised like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, right. and that's the important part about pouring into your children. What you're doing is you're sowing seeds in yep. them now, and you may not see that now, but hopefully, when they're 
you know, my age and, uh, you know, coming up to their 30s and 40s where they are able to lead community stuff. Like, you've poured stuff in them that they can, that's blossoming in them. You know, I tell them the story about how we came up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, having all of the things that I needed, but not having a whole lot of things I wanted. There you go. You know, there you go. and I remind them of that. You know, there was a time when I would, before football season was started, I would bring, I would put them in the car. And I think this may be what G's talking about. I would mm -hmm. bring them back to where my grandmother and mom yeah. was on the plantation yeah, it is. It in the road that they would walk down with me mm -hmm. in the mud road and they would walk me down to my my relatives to 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 stay during the day while they go work my grandmother in the field and and my mom you know struggling at at work and I would remind them that this is where we came from so when you pull up to where we live now this is where we came from so don't take it for granted ever take it for granted you know uh, about where we are now and also that your name is important mm -hmm. and I tell them all this thing one of the most important things that I have for them is my connection with people you know my networking portfolio mm -hmm. where we can pick up the phone and call this one and call that one right. that you know that a lot of individuals don't have yeah. at their disposal and I've talked about this the greatest thing that I can give you is not something out my wallet. The greatest thing I can give you is knowledge. And that's the greatest gift sometimes you can receive from people. Not money, but knowledge. And moving forward, like I said, I've kind of used that. And maybe why I have those individuals at my disposal is because maybe other individuals say also, you know, Sean and Shaz, daddy, you know, he pretty cool. Right. You know, you know, you know. He's a pretty straight guy. Right. You know, you know, he's he's an upright citizen. Stand-up guy. Stand-up you know, guy. So, you know, when it comes down to, you know, I'm not the guy that's gonna call a coach and curse the coach out. Right. Right. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not the guy that's gonna call the coach, why my boy is not this and not that. I'll call and say, what could we do better? There you go. What is he not doing, doing. up to par? You know, how can I help him move forward? You know. You know, rather than, you know, you've got some of those parents that is always, you know, point the finger, point the finger, the point the game. finger. Also, Trust you know. Me, I, hit, I'm hit, I, hit in, I hit him in the bleachers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and also you have some of these parents that go through the recruiting process and they feel it's more about them than it is about the kid. Right. You know. It's about what they couldn't achieve when it, when it was their time. Now that the kids come around, they, want, they back for vengeance. And they, I tell them all the time. <laughs> just like, you know, I tell the boys, you want to be a positive subject in those conversations that go on when you're not around. Well, the same thing with parents. When you're not around, you when those coaches are talking about the kid and the whole portfolio of the kid, and when they come to the parent part, you want that part to be positive and not a negative because sometimes that's where the line is drawn in the sand, you know, just because of how a parent operates. Yeah. You got this positive kid. You got this kid that like we, we're recruiting him. We want him to come on here. But see that there? We don't want no part of that. Mm -hmm. That's nothing but drama. We've already experienced that before, maybe but previous, you know, kids and, you know, their parents and people like this consider like an entourage mm -hmm. or whatever all right. that comes with. Right. No, we okay. We're going right. to just stay our distance. We're going to get somebody else who's probably not as ranked as high, but just as positive. It has right. great character that we can develop and build. Correct. They don't think that's they don't, – they don't believe in it that that's not part of the process. Definitely part of it. <laughs> right. Definitely. Right. You played at an HBCU. Mm -hmm. That's Southern. Um, and I've always been educated about HBCUs um, because I have some aunt, some aunts and some uncles and, uh, and uh, a few cousins that went to HBCUs, a few of right. them with the Grambling, a few of them with the Southern. So I, I was always informed. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of kids are. Right. Uh, what's your take on the state of HBCUs right now, and what DI did these three years, and how our, our community has ridiculed him and said so many negative things about him for leaving Jackson State and going to Colorado. What's, what's, what's your response and your take on it? Well, my journey at HBCUs is, is almost like Sean's journey has been at, uh, at Mississippi State. I had three head coaches. I had uh, Gerald Kimball. Mm -hmm. I had Marino Chasm, and then I finished off with Pete Richardson. 
legend. Coach, right? The legendary. Legend. He, uh, Coach Richardson's first year was our senior year. So, you know, he came in and won it his first year. And, you know, and we were able to kind of see uh, the difference in um, how program should be. Right. He ran it like NFL type deal as far as expectations, as far as organization, things like that. So I would say that we were just as organized, you know, as as a power five school, you know, as any. But the difference was resources. Um, and I think, you know, what a lot of individuals don't don't understand is that, you know, there has to be a funding source mm -hmm. for those resources. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, like I said, and and I think that's where, you know, we really don't put a whole lot of attention to, you know, I lived it where we didn't have air conditioning. Okay. <laughs> I lived it where, you know, the athletes got in line in the same line as the students to get lunch. Damn. You know, you know, I've lived that. Right. So uh, I see the different things that my my two sons, you know, the amenities and the, the luxuries that they have. And, you know, sometimes I talk to my buddies, I'm like, man, what if we had right. a quarter of that? Quarter. A quarter. Right. You know. Boy, you had noodles, boy. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, you look. Can tell them, you can tell look. everybody you had look. noodles, boy. <laughs> look, McDonald's was right across the hump on Harden Boulevard. Right. And... If you can find you four dollars and go get you three nine nine cent specials, you know, from McDonald's on given nights, man, you were doing good. Right. You were fine. Man, you were elated. You know, so to see what Coach Prime brought in the short time he was there is really, really you know, is a blessing. Is remarkable, you know, and and I get it, you know, we wanted to hold on to him longer. But right. you can't argue the things he did do in the short time, short he, time did he did it, it. you know. But once again, you know, as a culture sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we don't look at the big picture. Right. And we get a little selfish. And, yeah. and, 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 and we going to point out the negativity in us all the time, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, I wish that definitely, you know, there's somebody else that's going to pick up the banner and keep running because it was nice to see HBCUs, you know, have some of the, the, the things, uh, not the needs, but the wants right. that some of the other bigger programs have. In terms of that exposure, in terms of the, that, that media coverage, in terms of that, yeah. Do you think, because I, I think that uh, they signed a 10-year deal with ESPN, the HBCU network I, or something like that? I think like they that. signed a 10-year deal. To, I think it's $120 million. Something, like, something that, like that, yeah. But do you think the HBCUs can keep up the the awareness, mm -hmm. uh, the exposure, now that Prime is going to Colorado, like going forward? You know, and I think that's just going to be important because exposure, you know, is one of the things that brings, once again, those funding sources. You know, so I think that's the main thing we need to focus on. Right. Keeping that exposure out there to draw some of these funding sources. Now, of course, he was well connected. Right. But like I said, right. you know, there, there's other businessmen. There's there's other, you know, that's well connected. But like I said, the idea of thinking big, like he did, is something also. A lot of times what I've seen in our HBCU community is always, well, we can't do that. You know, uh, you know that's not possible. You know, and I think that's one of the things that that kind of ended up butting heads with towards the end of his his Team. stay there too, was you know you know he kept more and more and more, but if you're not pushing, you know sometimes you don't receive you know some of the luxuries that they did receive. Um, I don't know if y'all remember you talking about ESPN. I'll never forget one of the first weeks he was there. He talked about man, we can't get our score at the bottom of the ticker. Right. He said, and, and he wanted the names he said, on the back of the jersey. He said, the back of the jersey. He said, what does the, he said, that's somebody typing in. He said, we can't get our scores at the bottom of the ticker. You know? So it's the, it's he the, didn't start with getting the game. He the first thing he did was just get the score on the bottom of the ticker for the HBCU games. 
You yeah, know? not just that, but just the name of the back of the jersey. He was like, man, my, you know, do you think my mama didn't, didn't want to come out and come see me and I have my name in the back of the jersey mm-hmm. to represent, you know, their names? Mm-hmm. I just think that it was just, just from the outside looking in. This doesn't mean I'm right or I'm wrong, right? But when you put, you got a person of that persona, mm-hmm. caliber, um, coming into that type of situation, he's pushing, he's pushing, mm-hmm. he's pushing. And things are happening, but they're not happening at the pace that he wants it to happen at, right? Mm-hmm. What ends up happening is the people that could be there, they're not used to this level of change. Right. Because if they have to adjust and accept this change, they're going to also be held responsible or accountable for what change don't happen. Mm-hmm. So what they, I'm not saying they've been complacent by any mm-hmm. means of the imagining. They're just not used to this level of change because this level of resources requires a level of responsibility and right. accountability there you go. for what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. And if the people who are used to a different culture mm-hmm. are not used to this new change in culture, then they get replaced. Yeah. And people do, people always revert back, most people, their survival instinct. What keeps them employed? Mm-hmm. What keeps them here? So we're going to reject some of these things. It will give you some pushback on some of the things you want because my natural rejection is if I don't adjust to this change, I'm out. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And right. so I think that's some of the some of the conflict that I think that he could have been coming up against mm-hmm. with some of the people who've been there for different teams in long periods of time. Mm-hmm. And you come in with this whole new thing. And and I think what supported what he was trying to do, they were winning. Mm-hmm. Right. If they were losing, they could have said, hey, you just want what you want, but you're not winning. Right. But when he won, it's like everybody had to get up to date with the changes. Mm-hmm. But the people who could have been there, or just the, even the conference, was not ready for that change. And he right. made a point in a celebration bowl, or well, the press conference right before the celebration bowl, he said, everybody keeps saying, stay and get Jackson State to a bigger conference. But he was like, is the basketball, is the basketball team, ready? team ready? Right. Is the softball football team ready? ready? Is the baseball team ready? He was like, it's football just not about go. football. Correct. And so... I didn't think about that. Mm-hmm. I, I never, go. like, he made me think outside the box. I was like, damn, right. that's true. Right. They not Notre Dame. They not independent where they could just be like, okay, we going to the SEC or the Big 12 not and BYU, the rest bro. of the sports stay right. in the swag. <laughs> and so, at some point, you had to know Prime was going to elevate itself. And like he said, he don't chase the bag. The bag always chased him. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. that's you know right. what I'm saying? That's right. But, uh, I do want to ask you this, man, um, as we get ready to wrap up. A lot of people saying Nick Saban falling off. A lot of people saying, you know, Tuscaloosa not going to be the same hey, going forward. I'm raising my hand. One of the folks. You know, I, I alluded to it. One, I'm one of the folks. I alluded <laughs> to it, you know, in the beginning of this podcast. 21 kids was in the transfer portal for Alabama. Uh, starters, you know, because – if you're leaving Bama, it, where you going? Where you going? <laughs> it, it, you don't get too much better than Bama. Um, well, my question to you, because I know you've been at every home game, uh, you are one of those parents that's that's very observant. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, what do you and and, to, and and let me say this before I ask you this: I think Bama losing two games don't mean the sky's falling. Right. Agreed. Right? That 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 Agreed. just means right. Nick Saban and that and that program has set the standard that high that two losses and them not being in a full team playoff, people call that a bad season, right? Mm-hmm. But what's your take on and your response to people saying that is that that dynasty in Tuscaloosa is about to come to an end? Well, I paid attention to the signing class on yesterday. Mm-hmm. Out the roof, mm-hmm. number one. Out the roof. Uno, mm-hmm. you know Uno. And hold on, they passed Georgia. They passed Georgia. Yeah. They did? They yeah. passed Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> so They passed Georgia. They're number one. They're number one. Yeah. I didn't know that. They passed Georgia. Well, now they yeah. got past me. Once, you know, what I've noticed, one thing is that kids are kids. Mm-hmm. So it, the, the kids at Alabama are just like the kids at LSU. Mm-hmm. So once again, opportunity to, I don't want to say take an easier road. But a different road, you know, an alternate route that wasn't there for me before. Right. You know, I just think kids are going to do that. You know, so you know there are kids that 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 may look for an alternate road at whatever school, whatever university. Nobody's immune to that, including Bama. You know, so 
that's why the 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 amount of people in the portal doesn't surprise me uh about Bama. But the one thing I know is that uh the standard is not changing. And the one thing that Nick Saban does is is he's going to tell it straight. You know, I like the way he tells it straight, whether it benefits him or not. And I think kids can always relate to that. You know, it's different when when a uh, uh, position coach is, the, but when you're sitting in there with the head man and he's laying it on the line to you of why uh, or, or his thoughts about your situation, you know, I think kids respect that. Um, and like I said, I don't think that he um, deterred all the kids that got in the portal from not getting in. <coughs> you know, all of them have the exit meetings and different things like that. Yeah. But, you know, just being around it, you know, I've been around two organizations. And there's just a different mm-hmm. in Tuscaloosa. Right. You know. You know, I've had coaches to 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 tell to say, give me some of those differences. You know, let me know. Mm-hmm. You know, inform me. Right. You know, everybody will know what Bama doing. The inner <laughs> the, the inner workings are just different. I I don't disagree. I, you know, so I don't think that I don't think the kids are gonna fall off. I could be wrong, and like I said, this signing class is a perfect example. You know. Um, but like I said, you know, anytime you lose two games and they act like the world is coming to an end, <laughs> that's a standard that you've made. That's a standard. That's a standard. My biggest thing about Bama is that, man, we've had a chance to watch them now since Nick got there. What, 08? Mm-hmm. When he got there. I think what also makes him a program is not just the head coach, but the assistants that he had around him. That's and a good that's, point. And there that's where I think where the standard is to that part coming down. When you start thinking about some of the coaches from – Lane Kiffin, who was there for some time. Sarkeesian, who was there mm-hmm. for some time. Um, Burns. Nap- Coach Burns. Coach Burns. Billy Napier was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the Kirby Smart. I mean, Kirby Smart. Yeah. The mm-hmm. DC there. Yep. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Phillips, who was one of the DCs at one Kevin point. Steele. Mm-hmm. Kevin Steele. So, when you start to think about some of the position and in, in coaches that were all mm-hmm. – that came through Alabama, you don't see some of those prestigious assistant coaches that cre- create that standard. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say to myself, is it something that could be coming down? Because you have to replace those guys. Correct. But, but those are the people who are out there recruiting. And, and not, I get it, Nick is the mastermind when it comes to recruit, but those assistants are just as valuable. Yes. They, those are the people who are related to those kids. Yes. But when you start getting that kind of turnover, you got Lane over there at Ole Miss. You got Curry Small over there at Georgia. We got Billy Napier at Florida. You got to start thinking, uh, Steve got a a tree. now over From at Texas. Texas. Right. So and Texas talk, had them this year. They had him. Texas had him. They had him. Could have been three losses. Could have been three losses. Ooh, but he missed the kick. At uh, the end. Missed the kick, and then what? They gave up a a, a long run at the end. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> so when you start thinking yeah. about that, right? You start saying to yourself, "What? Well, hold on." And then you start to get to this situation where, when you start thinking about the past players that came out of Alabama, mm-hmm. let's just talk about some of the running back positions. You know, you had from. Mark Ingram to Derrick Henry for one point in time Trent Richardson was this highly rated mm-hmm. guy coming out of the you know and the list goes on Najee Najee mm-hmm. uh, uh, Scarborough uh, Scarborough Josh Jacobs man mm-hmm. the list goes on right mm-hmm. and then nothing against Gibbs but nothing against him but good player but good player but he ain't them mm-hmm. right so when you start seeing that and you're like mm-hmm. hold on then you're looking at you know some of the receivers that came out of mm-hmm. the past years from you know, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, uh, Julio Jones, Devontae Amar- Smith. Devontae Smith, Amara Cooper, uh, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. You start looking at them group of guys. And, and no disrespect to the guys that's there. Mm-hmm. But you see, they ain't them. It was a difference at the receiver room. It was a difference. The guys that played this year, it was definitely a difference. difference. I noticed it for sure for the LSU game. For the Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you see that. I noticed it. And then when you start looking at. Just the past few years, not mm-hmm. as much, but if we talking about D line, you, it was always Bama. From when you start looking at from the De, uh, Demarcus, uh, what's his name? They, they played for the Bills, third overall. Uh, uh, Marcellus, what was that Marcellus. dude? Marcellus, oh, oh, I can't get them in my head. That played for Bama. 
He played for Bam. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Darius. Marcel Darius. 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 Yeah, Marcel yeah, Darius. Yeah, yeah, Marcel yeah. Darius. Yeah. From from him to you know now John uh, Jonathan Allen. Mm-hmm. You start thinking about some of the D linemen, uh, Quentin Williams, mm-hmm. the, some of the guys that came through Bama. Right. And then you see this group. Yeah. And you can't name a name. Then you go look at Georgia. Tim mm-hmm. what? Anderson. Tim Anderson. Yeah. But you know, but you know, but you start looking at Georgia D line. You like, well, hold on. <laughs> I think they hit a bad cycle. I really did. But I really think, and look, I could be biased, mm-hmm. of course. Right. But I think the crew that they brought in last year, okay. Which is and, which got to learn. And, yeah, and, and learn. then the crew that they just signed just now, you know, you know, I would say those are those caliber of, of, of dudes again. Right. You know, so like I said, I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. Proof in the pudding. You know, but like I said, I mean, I don't, you know, I think sometimes, you know, you do hit a bad, you miss, right. you know, you miss on every a, school on a, do it, you know? every school do it, right. every school do it. I think that they, they're at that point where I wouldn't call it a slump by any stretch of the imagination. Two losses is not a slump. That's right. Just, that's just off right. in imagination. But when you start looking at the guys that came in and the names that came before them and mm-hmm. what their status was when they got picked, and then you look at the, some of the guys that's there now, and you're just mm-hmm. like, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. These are some of the guys that have they. Those kids have so much pressure mm-hmm. to live up to not just what they want to do yes. as a team, right. but yes. the pressures of the teams that with the yes. the teams that came before them accomplished and achieved. Yes. Not just on the football field, Alabama, but the selections into the pro level. Mm-hmm. They got they they have different they have different problems. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm gonna preface my comments before I say this. I'm not at all a Bama fan. Right. <laughs> but I respect greatness. Okay. Great. I think that the transfer portal doesn't benefit a school like Bama. And here's why. I agree. Because at a school like Bama, you have to go through that process. Correct. You're not going to get instant gratification unless you are Julio Jones. Correct. Unless you are Trent Richardson. Like if it let, unless you just like a freak of nature. nature. Somebody that just right. You know what I mean? You, you know. gotta be somebody like that, right? To come in and get that instant success, right? Bama is not a school for that. Bama is a school where you come in, you learn, you go through the trials and your tribulations. I would say them in Ohio State don't benefit from it. And Those then once, and then once you figure it out, one year, yeah, <laughs> one year, you get that one year, mm. yeah, through the roof. And Robbie Green talked about it on the show. Yeah. He said Mark Ingram, Julio Jones, Julio Jones, and he named somebody else, wanted to transfer after their freshman year. Yeah. He said he told Mark Ingram, man, you're not transferring. Yeah, no, no. Boy, you're going to win the Heisman. Heisman. I said, man. Yeah, yeah Robbie's told me that story before. Mm-hmm. I said, man, I said, get out of here, man. You ain't telling man. He said, gee, I'll put this on, I'll put this on my yeah. child. I told Mark Ingram, I'm not letting you transfer. Yeah. You going to win the Heisman. So my point is the portal hurts a school like Bama. So in my opinion, then, you know, I, I hope Shaz do his thing, and I, I, I hope <laughs> they see a lot of success at Bama. But that's why I, I kind of feel like Bama's dominance, not saying they're going to fall off Lord, the map, correct. Mm-hmm. but their dominance may take a step back because of the transfer portal, because now you know what schools are going to use against them? You gonna go there and, and sit sit on a shelf for two years, where you can come here and be the guy next year. Right. And so that's so what's happening. A school like Ole Miss could come in and have a successful season right. like the one that, year and get guys to come in. Like I'm not saying like AJ, like AJ Brown, DK, they can recruit those guys in the portal. That's what right. I'm saying. Trying to recruit them out of high school. Right. And that's my point. And so I think that goes against the Bama way. Right. Right. And so Nick Saban talked about it when he hired Lane Kiffin. He was always a, you know. Line up in our formation and smash mouth, smash mouth, smash mouth. And then when he hired Lane Kiffin and Sarkeesian, he started throwing it all over the place. And it was like, well, what's going on? What's going on? He said, look, either you evolve with the times or you get left behind. Left Correct. Behind. Right? Correct. And I think that with the NIL, that's something he had to get used, used to. to. He's, going, he's evolving with that. Right. right? With the transfer portal, I think this year and last year, Got his mind right. I'm t- if y'all think Nick Saban not about to figure this out. Well, he going to figure it out. Right. He going to figure it out. I think it it, it, it might take a – I think if he thought about retiring in the next year or two, now nah, it has extended it 
probably for another six, seven years because now he wants to show you everybody. Well, he ain't let it defeat him. So I do think the dominance is going to stop for about two years, maybe three. I'm going to say two years. Yeah. And then it's going to pick back up because he's going to figure out how to now keep those kids that come in that want that instant gratification. He's going to put something in place. Right. That's my opinion. Right. And one of the things he told us as a family, you know, because they have a team in the IL deal, uh, that wasn't announced until after the class was signed. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I didn't want Chaz to come here because of what I could offer him from an NIL standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because I don't want the same thing that happened to Texas A&M, you know, to where they go in and get it, and now they out. You know, so... What they won, four games this year? Boy, it's bad down there. In, in four college. games. It, it's bad in college Has station. <laughs> It's bad in college station. You got, and, and that's what I'm saying. You got to be careful. I, like I just told the kid this, and you know, and you know, you real close to the kid like me. I just had a conversation with him this week. I said, I think the reason why you didn't have the season that you that you could have had because everything you got nil wise, you you didn't earn it. You didn't earn it, and you you it, it kind of make you feel like you made it already. I said, you ain't you ain't. You got the gratification. Thirty, forty thousand dollars in IL. That ain't no money. That ain't no money, and right? Co and coach, and I still say, how do kids, how are kids able to have as much as these kids have, and still maintain the same focus when they're hungry? There you go. There you can't you go. make me. There you go. No, no, no. You there can't you make me believe that one bit, man. Why, Cole? It ain't no. Listen. All that talent at and them got running wrong. 19 and 20? No way. Yes. All that talent no and 17, 18 in, in some cases. <clears throat> all that talent and them got running around on that campus. You can't tell me them people shouldn't have won at the least eight games this year. But you know why? It's like you saying. If I'm pulling up in a scat pack, a Mercedes Benz, I'm going, I'm going home to a two-story house. I'm going home to a condo overlooking the city. I got $50,000 in my bank account. I got all, every pair of shoes I want. When that alarm clock go off, am I really that motivated? When I'm in meetings, my mind is everywhere else. When I'm in walkthroughs, my mind is somewhere else because I kind of feel like I made it, especially if you're coming from poverty. Right. Especially if the money could be or could not be going <laughs> back home. Hundred thousand. I don't know how true it is. Nick Saban says it's not true. But they say Bryce Young had it, a million dollar NIL deal. That, that's what we report. If you go read some articles, that's what we report. Right. I, I'm going to leave you with one question. This is going to be a question I, I, I okay. ask many people when it comes to college football. We go, go ahead and try to wrap it up. The <coughs> game has changed. We now see NIL, um, transfer portal. I'm looking for one more change for college football. Eligibility to the NFL draft. What do you think the eligibility change should be? Because right now we're in a place in the climate where we're watching a lot of sophomore players true sophomore players, mm -hmm. not playing their junior year, <clears throat> come out of the NFL draft, a.k.a. Jamal Chase, top five, and we've seen And it's happened. hurt the bowl games. And it's, it's really hurt the them. bowl games. What do you think the eligibility changes need to be? Or should, or should they think? Do you think things should stay the same? Because my position is they should be able to come out true sophomores or, le or legally 20 years old. You know, I think a study definitely needs to be done <clears throat> because, once again, football – uh, you know, handcuffs the athletes more than any other sport. Um, you know, but in in I'll give you a prime example. You know, every kid at twenty is not built like Jamar Chase. Right. Agreed. So Our you know, Claret. I think uh, <laughs> Mike Williams. Or, um, that's right. Mike Williams at USC. So <laughs> the four net. I think a uh, 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 age may be tough to determine. I don't know how do you put a production scale on it. I think it should go case-by-case case basis. It, it, I'm more with G, you know. But this is where nobody wants to get sued because if it's a case-by-case case basis, somebody has got to be the judge and jury, you know. So <clears throat> how do you make sure that it's fair, consistent, and equitable yep. about who can go and who has to stay? So that's a tough one. Well, of course, you just go off of what the what the NFL scout saying. If the NFL scout saying, look, if he come out, he's gonna be projected to go fifth, sixth round. Well, you gotta come back. 
If they're saying you could go in the first three rounds, all right, you can come out as a true sophomore. So you're saying a grade, depending on the draft there grade. You go. But that's somebody else telling your kid, your kid, that they could qualify. Versus if I put an age limit on it, that's, that's ain't nobody else telling way. him. That's he can go ahead and make an adult yeah, decision. It can't go off of the NCAA, or it can't go off that because it's going to go in too many Politics. legal battles. Correct. So but the, the NFL scouts come out and, and give a grade, and if it has you anything past third round, no, you can't come out as a true sophomore. That's what I think it should be. I think that's the conversation that it. that's the next one that's on the horizon. Yeah. Because we're watching too many kids. I want, I'm watching way too many kids. I watched Nick Bosa didn't really play his junior year. Mm-hmm. And came out with the second overall pick. Uh, I, I watched Chase Young really didn't play his third year. Second overall pick. Jamar I watched Leonard, Jamar, Leonard Fournette did Derek not Stingley. play. Derek Stingley. Leonard Fournette did not play his junior year at LSU. He, the sophomore year told you everything. Right. And so we're watching guys. Now, granted, <clears throat> I'm talking about some of the most dominant athletes that we've seen. But, however, I don't think that's stopping. I think we're going to still get premier athletes right. that's coming through college football. But I'm telling myself, man, what was Claret and Mike Williams up to when they was trying to be eligible that they had to not come out? But now we're, we're – 20 years later, we're watching the athletes now that can do it. And I, I thought they could do it then. Right. But there was just one – there was really one or two. We're watching one almost every class. Correct. That's So I think that conversation is going to be coming up. That I love the transfer portal. I love the NIL. But now I'm reaching a place where – I think it needs some. We need to have some more guidelines, stipulations with the transfer portal. True. I think something's coming. It's wild, wild west something's right now. Something's coming. Something's coming. It's, and I think that's yeah, going to evolve as, it, yeah, as you start they, getting more yeah, data and new yeah, information. Yeah. Just like they t- tweaked it a little bit this year to where they had, there's a period. You know, it's not just all year random. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's periods that a kid can get in the portal. You know, so I think that was important. But I think once again, uh, there needs to be more tweaking. Definitely yeah. more tweaking. And now, nah, but to your to your to go against your point, Anderson and Bryce Young playing in the Sugar Bowl. I mean, not, and it's not the full team playoff. I don't know how Nick Saban pull that off, but they playing. Well, <laughs> rumor Nick. is rumor is that there's an insurance policy out of this world on both of them. Oh well, shit! Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, well, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter. <laughs> my and dog, I, my dog Sean <laughs> came on. Man, I appreciate you coming on the fan. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I definitely, appreciate definitely it. Definitely got to get you back on in the near future because I, I know, appreciate you I know it's gonna out, be man. much more to come as it pertains to Shaz and Sean D. Uh, let Sean D. Man, uh, congrats. Tell him I got a hoodie for him. It's man. his for, birthday today. Man, matter of <laughs> fact, matter birthday fact, birthday today. I got a hoodie for him for for graduating, man. Okay. What size right. he was? Large. 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 I got, yeah, tell him I got it, man. Tell him I got. Tell Shaz. Tell Shaz I got. I'm gonna give him his in person. There you go. Uh, after he comes sit down on fan view with us. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, he'll he'll be down there the whole week. You know. Oh I mean, yeah, we got to get him on. Yeah, here. they have oh, the yeah. report. They have the report on on Monday. They've got to you know be at the at the team hotel. So when he gets home later tonight, he'll be down for the whole time. Let him know. Oh, let, let him know. Him pa- know pass the message. Pass, pass the message. My dog Shaz talking to him. Man. Seen him come up as a pup. <laughs> First time I saw him play before before, before we ended. Uh, East Saint John. I don't even remember me coming to that. Coming to the to the game, I'm East Saint John. He was in the Porterville Middle. Uh-huh. Y'all played. Uh, I know y'all played at East Saint John, but it was like two games in a row. Uh-huh. Y'all played, but uh-huh. anyway, he's playing running back. Uh huh. Hey, you believe Shaz was playing running back? Yeah. Yeah. I saw it then. <laughs> <laughs> saw it then. You, you just you just see you just see it. You just see it. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. And they is right there. He just been been a part of some some greatness, man. And some was on uh on uh NFL uh. On Sundays, you what got you? Moss. Yeah, you got Sean, Moss. Sean D. Yeah. Sean D. I was at that one, game too. Moss. I caught that. I caught that. Oh, one hand. G Sports in the building. Yeah. God, God just put me in places. <laughs> <laughs> he just put me everywhere where I, I need to be. I, I can't do you, man. Yeah, I can't. I can't do you, man. No, I can do you when we have big disagreements. <laughs> we get along. We're like, ah, ah. Yeah, man. But yeah. dog, Sean Preston Senior in the building, man. In the building, man. Building, man. Listen. Yeah. Listen, we just want to thank everybody for subscribing. Um, get locked in, Fan View Podcast. If you got YouTube, if you have Facebook, if you have Twitter, I mean, any social media platform, we're there. Also, we're on every media stream podcast possible from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. Listen, I'm that boy, Fred. G Sports, man, signing out. And listen, we appreciate you having you on your own. Sean Preston Senior, man, you know, it's been a long time coming. Yep. And like I said, everybody stay locked in, stay tuned in. We got more stories, more, you know, Everything to come. Trust me, this ain't going to where we can't stop. We will not stop, and we won't stop. That's the Fan View Podcast, y'all. It is.